Greece. It's where Europe's civilization began and the very idea of democracy. But today, it's in crisis. What is happening here doesn't just affect this country. It may well destroy the dream of a unified Europe. Ten years after joining the Eurozone, the Greek economy has collapsed. Living standards have plummeted. Hundreds of thousands are out of work. There are no jobs here. Me as a doctor, I, I can't find a job here. Thousands have left the country to find a new future. We don't have nothing, absolutely nothing. And like us, there are thousands of people. Many Greeks blame the European Union, and especially Germany, for the crisis they are in. This is not one union with democracy. There is no democracy in Europe. We certainly don't want the Germans to teach us how to do this because we, we've already had this bad experience. Today, 70 years after its military defeat, Germany is the strongest economic power in Europe. Its political leadership holds the future of Greece in its hands. Germany does have a responsibility towards Greece. We have benefited from the Europe. Germans have been willing and are still willing to bail out Greece under certain conditions. I'm on a journey to discover why these two countries, tied together by history and culture, are now locked into a conflict. Why has the European vision, designed to heal the wounds of the past, instead brought them back to the surface? On the 4th of April, 2012, just before nine in the morning, the 77-year-old pharmacist Dimitris Christoulas made his way to this square in the center of Athens, next to the parliament building. As morning commuters rushed by, he stopped under this tree, took out a pistol, and shot himself in the head. As the news spread, hundreds of people poured into the square. They left flowers, flags, and notes at the foot of the tree under which Dimitris had killed himself. One wrote, enough is enough. Another, who will be next? Dimitris' pension had been so reduced by government cuts that he was destitute. His suicide was a political protest. Afterwards, there were vigils, marches, and clashes between demonstrators and police. I have known Greece since I was a boy. I came here first on holiday and later for work. Slightly ahead, these are official projections of the final results as opposed to the exit polls that we were hearing earlier. From 2006 to 2010, I was based in Athens as a journalist and I was happy here in this beautiful country full of sunshine and history. But towards the end, I watched Greece begin its descent into ruin. There was anger, and now it seems despair. Greece had the lowest suicide rate in Europe, but I've been shocked by the dramatic increase over the past two years. In his farewell note, Dimitris Christoulas blamed Greek politicians for the crisis. He compared them to collaborators who worked with Nazis in the Second World War. And he said that young Greeks would one day hang today's politicians as traitors. Old wounds are reopening, historical enmities coming back to the surface. So what is really going on here? Who is to blame? The Greeks themselves? The European Union? Or as many Greeks believe, their old enemy, the Germans?
I used to live in central Athens, in Plaka, right underneath the Acropolis. Coming back after two years away, it still feels like home. But I now feel sad as I walk these streets. My old neighborhood has changed. So many of the shops I knew have closed down as business dried up. This was the bookshop that I enjoyed dropping into. And this was our local delicatessen. I don't even know what's happened to the people who used to work here. It's not poverty as you might see in parts of Africa or Asia, but this used to be a bustling middle-class area full of cafes and shops. The economy has shrunk by some 20% over four years. More than half of those under 25 are out of work. Many civil servants have seen their salaries and pensions fall by 50% or more. Nobody had imagined all this back when Greece joined the Eurozone in 2001. Greeks felt that at last, we finally made it to the top. We can share in the European dream. And at first, all went well. Living standards rose, Greece was booming, or so it seemed. In fact, the country was sinking into debt. Greek governments were borrowing more than they earned. And after the global economic crisis in 2008, Greece had to pay higher and higher interest rates to borrow more money. Eventually, it could no longer cope. The IMF and the European Union, led by Germany, provided emergency funds, but in return insisted Greece adopt harsh austerity measures, policies that only accelerated the economic collapse and led to confrontation on the streets, massive protests and riots. Today, I find Greece facing financial ruin and on the edge of political disaster. A dream born out of the nightmare of the Second World War, a dream to unite different nations under one currency, has become a tragedy. I worry that there's no end in sight. Emi Christoulas is the daughter of Dimitris Christoulas, the 77-year-old who killed himself. I went to her home to find out what she thought of what her father had done. Had you known the depths of his despair? And do you think that you could have anticipated such an extreme act? Μιλάμε για απελπισία η οποία προέρχεται μέσα από την πολιτική ματέωση. Αυτό είναι πάρα πολύ σημαντικό για να μπορέσουμε να κατανοήσουμε και το περιεχόμενο της πράξης. Ε, όχι λοιπόν, στη βάση αυτή, όχι, δεν το είχα φανταστεί. Ήξερα πάντα ότι ο πατέρας μου μέχρι και στο τέλος, μέχρι τα 77 του χρόνια, ήταν ένας άνθρωπος που έδινε πάρα πολλά πράγματα στην υπόθεση του αγώνα. Δεν είχα φανταστεί ότι θα τα δώσει όλα τη ζωή του. When you look at the mess that Greece is in, whose, whose fault is it? Did the Greek people create this situation? Did your leaders or are foreign governments responsible? Καταρχήν, αυτή τη στιγμή το φαινόμενο της κρίσης δεν είναι ελληνικό. Ήρθε εισαγόμενη στην Ευρώπη. Οι γαλλικές και κυρίως οι γερμανικές τράπεζες είχαν λόγο, είχαν πρόβλημα. Και εκεί η κρίση θα έλεγα ότι αναπτύχθηκε σε ευρωπαϊκό έδαφος. Με αυτή την έννοια, αυτό που ζει αυτή τη στιγμή ο ελληνικός λαός δεν είναι κάτι το οποίο εκείνος το παρήγαγε. Η Ελλάδα βέβαια έχει κάποιες στρεβλώσεις όλα αυτά τα χρόνια. Τη στρεβλώση της αποανάπτυξης, τη στρεβλώση της διαφθοράς του κράτους, τη στρεβλώση της μη καλής λειτουργίας του κρατικού μηχανισμού. Ε, και όλα αυτά δημιούργησαν ίσως το πιο εγω, ε, γόνιμο έδαφος από όλα τα υπόλοιπα ευρωπαϊκά κράτη, καταρχήν και κύρια στην Ελλάδα. In his suicide note, Emmy's father Dimitris attacked Greece's politicians, but he also alluded to the Nazi occupation. Germany and Greece, their histories are entwined. 
The first king to rule over Greece after its war of independence from the Ottoman Empire was a German from Bavaria. Imposed in 1832 by the European great powers. Otto was unpopular. He faced protests. He survived assassination attempts. He eventually fled and died back home in Germany. But it was the Nazi invasion of Greece in 1941 that changed the relationship dramatically. The German soldiers seized raw materials and food. People began to starve to death and the Allied blockade made things even worse. Some 300,000 Greeks died of malnutrition and famine during the occupation, which lasted for three and a half painful years. Many Greeks today still feel Germany should pay reparations in return for money the Nazis stole and for the suffering they caused. for a nation. Anna is an old friend of mine. Her grandfather, a lawyer during the occupation, helped bring these pictures to the world's attention so that the Red Cross would intervene. So these photos are amazing, Anna. It was your grandfather who smuggled them out of Greece, is that right? Well, he expedited them being smuggled out of Greece. He, um, Lydia, he her aunt, uh, was five years old when the German soldiers him. arrived in Athens. I lived through all of this. We were caught in Greece during the war, and uh, we lived down in Ammonia Square, where all, all these children that you see in these photographs are children that I saw every day. I, I, some were, I, I saw people dead on my doorstep or on the neighbor's doorstep, down the street. The, what Anna mentioned, they used these carts. They were just carts that they would take the dead bodies, one piled on top of the other, away to be buried in mass grave sites. These little children starving on the streets, begging. Um, it was just a, an unbelievable experience, I'd say. It must have been terrifying for a little girl to be in those circumstances. It was. If I can... Um, before I, I, I came today, I, on the way here, I was thinking, what was my childhood? And my childhood could be described by three words. Fear, fear, fear. That's all I knew. I was constantly terrified. I was constantly terrified of seeing the, the tanks with the German soldiers. I was terrified. Well, when the SS came to the door and, and knocked on our door and took my mother away because they thought she was a spy, I was terrified at the sounds, at the shots, at the bombings, at the, uh, you know, there were searchlights overhead looking for planes at night. And I thought, oh my gosh, they're going to shoot these planes down and they're going to fall over our, our house and we're going to burn because we could see the fires on, in the far off mountains from from planes that had been downed or what other events. And, and that's what I can say. I, we didn't have a childhood. My brother and I didn't have a childhood. We'd, it was just taken. I could see how memories of the German occupation are seared onto the minds of those who lived through it. And how these memories are being revived by today's crisis passed on to a younger generation. A couple of hours' drive from Athens is the village of Vistumo, where they faithfully mark the anniversary of a massacre by the Germans nearly 70 years ago. <laughs> Lucia was 17 years old when her mother and sister were killed, along with more than 200 others. She survived only because she was visiting relatives in a nearby village. Mm -hmm. 
Ενώ το έζησα και αυτά τα παιδάκια μου. Το έζησα. Για σκέψα και στο σε ένα παιδί, παιδικό να ζήσει τέτοια πράγματα, να τις πάρει, να την αλλάξει. Να την πάω την αδερφή μου στα αγκαλιά μου, στο νεκροταφείο. Δεν, δεν, δεν ξεχνιόνται αυτά τα πράγματα. When I moved to Greece a few years ago, people didn't really talk about the Second World War very much. It felt like a wound that was healing. These days, the pain is much more raw, and I think that's because of the economic crisis and the feeling that some Greeks have that Germany is controlling their lives once more. Parts of the Greek press and media have played a big role in stirring up these anti-German feelings. They have no inhibition in comparing today's German leaders with the Nazis. Οι Γερμανοί εισβολείς ευρίσκονται εις τα πρόχειρα των Αθηνών. Yorgos Trangas hosts a TV show. He's a powerful media magnate. He's on the radio and he owns magazines. I said every night the truth. I believe that about the really economic situation in Athens and uh, in our country. Okay. And uh, time to time, I said about the Germans because, you know, they have one style uh, occupation style for the Greek people. It's, this is not one union with democracy. There is no democracy in Europe. Europe, uh, three years, is with the, you know, with the head over the people. German hand, of course. The face of Merkel. I'm not German. We are partnered. Attitudes towards Germany have changed very quickly in Greece. In a recent survey, 74% of Greeks said that Germany is trying to dominate Europe through its financial power. 76% said that Germany is hostile towards Greece. And the German government's pressure on Greece to cut salaries, pensions and other state benefits has made Germany unpopular. Everybody saying Greece is going to crumble the European Union. No, we're going to save Europe from the German Empire. Trying to rise again. Genius, genius. How are we going to do that? Bankrupt them. <laughs> Yanis Papas, a Greek American, is now via YouTube one of the most popular comedians in Greece. Dragmas, thank you, Germany. You fell right into the plot. We use the euro to pay you, the genius, genius Greek people. Greece has a problem? No, you gave Greece the money. You have a problem. <laughs> Rest of the world, from Greece, you're welcome. But other parts of the Greek media have delved deeper, uncovering a sometimes corrupt relationship between Greek politicians and German companies. In March uh, 2010, I was sitting at, uh, in my office and received a phone call from uh, a colleague in Germany, Klaus Ott, from the Süddeutsche Zeitung, telling me that uh, a former employee of Ferrostal, which is a daughter company of Mann, admitted uh, while being questioned by the Munich uh, state attorney that uh, bribes were given to uh, Greek officials in order to purchase uh, four submarines. Tassos Teloglu has spent years investigating a complex story involving the Greek Navy, a contract for several extremely expensive submarines, and a German company, Ferrostal. This deal, worth about two billion euros, was initially signed over a decade ago. The story shows both how much Greece is prepared to spend on weapons and how far one German company would go to secure a contract. Approximately 25 to 30 million were distributed to officials with uniform and without uniform. That means 
politicians that took the decision that the Greece should um, buy the German submarines. Greek politicians and Greek officers of the Navy were bribed in order to buy that submarines. As these embarrassing details emerged, a court in Munich charged and convicted two executives from Ferrestal, which also paid a fine of about 140 million euros. In April this year, the Greek Minister of Defense, at the time the deal was negotiated, was arrested on charges of money laundering. This man was in charge of arms procurement at the Ministry of Defense in Athens for six years. He resigned in 2010. Actually, I'm surprised that uh, the investigation did not go any further than the former defense minister. You think it should go further? I have testified about this uh, in an investigations committee in the Greek parliament. Yes, it should go further. There were more people who might have been making money out of this. I know that the, uh, the facts point to the direction that this contract, among others, if not all, uh, were not handled properly or appropriately by the political leadership of the defense ministry at various time periods. There was a culture of corruption. Uh, it w there was a culture of corruption, yes. It's not easy for me, being a Greek, saying this, but uh, there was a culture of corruption. Today we have paid around 97% of the price of the submarines, and what we have received is just one submarine. Germany has done well out of huge weapons exports to Greece. Until 2010, Greece spent a higher proportion of its GDP on defense than any other country in the European Union. The defense expenditure was a key, if not the contributing factor, in uh, the huge increase of uh, the Greek public debt. So the situation we face today as Greece owes much to this uh, spending spree, allow me to say, in the uh, past decade. Greeks are now paying the price for all this, for the failures of a ruling elite which built up huge debts, and for the failures of other countries, like Germany, which allowed and often encouraged this to happen. In the second part of my journey, I find out that this crisis is forcing many Greeks to leave their country. And I also travel to Germany to see what people there think about the disaster in Greece. Early every Sunday morning, Greek soldiers raised the flag over the ancient Acropolis, just as they did in 1944 to mark the liberation from German occupation. But today, some 70 years later, Greeks feel that life is unbearable and many blame policies imposed by Germany and the European Union. Throughout history, at times of trouble, Greeks have emigrated. It happened just after the Second World War, and today it's happening again. But the difference this time is that so many of the people who are leaving are young, very well educated, very bright. When I moved to Greece, it wasn't like that. It was such an optimistic country, but now, I know so many young Greeks who just want to get out. Never mind the anti-German feeling. In Athens, lots of young professionals want to learn German so they can emigrate. Language schools are one of the few businesses doing well in the city. Kronis is a doctor working in the Greek health system. He's been offered a job in Germany and he wants to go. 
He's been studying German for the past six months, but he's about to sit an exam that he must pass if he's to take up the job. Well, there are no jobs here. We do not have where to work. There are no jobs, absolutely no jobs. And uh, every, uh, here in Greece, everybody studies in these days, you know? And uh, me as a doctor, I, I can't find a job here after I finish my residency, you know? Or, or either as a private doctor or at a um, hospital here in Greece. No way. Now, as, as you know, there's now an image of, of Greeks, and maybe especially in Germany, actually, that you're lazy, you're corrupt, and you don't pay your taxes. Is that fair? No, no, we are not lazy. We are working very hard. I pay my taxes. Everybody that I know pays uh, his taxes, and uh, I don't know why this conception uh, from Europe is that. I, I really do not understand this. But, Kronos, how can Greece ever recover if the best people, like you, leave? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. But I don't see future here. And uh, to tell you the truth, if I go to Germany, I, it will be very difficult for me to return here. So, do you feel that you're betraying your country by leaving? Uh, to tell you the truth, yes. I feel that, but... Uh, I have to watch uh, my future and my family's future at first. And those are the priorities? Yes, of course. And uh, after that, it's country, <laughs> not at the first place. I find Cronus' decision to leave very sad, but I can understand it. It's an indictment of the politicians that stole money and allowed the rich and powerful to evade taxes. But many Greeks went along with this system, not just the tax evasion, but they also enjoyed the patronage and kickbacks from the politicians, the apparently secure jobs in the public sector, all paid for with money Greece didn't have. Now it's payback time, and Greek society is in turmoil. In the coming days, Greeks must decide what to do about their situation. There is a general election, the second in a turbulent year. Emi Christoulas' father committed suicide in public in April. In his final letter, he wrote that he hoped his death would be followed by political change. She's a member of the left-wing Syriza. It's always been a fringe party, but has recently surged in popularity. It's opposed to the austerity policies of the European Union. Manolis Glezis is a Syriza member of parliament. He's also a national hero. In 1941, he climbed the Acropolis with a friend in the middle of the night and tore down the swastika, the first act of resistance to the occupation. He was imprisoned and tortured by the Nazis. Now, again, he feels Germans are oppressing his country and should pay reparations from the war. Δεν υπάρχει κανένα μίσος απέναντι στο γερμανικό λαό, αλλά απέναντι στην πολιτική που ακολουθούν οι γερμανικές κυβερνήσεις, σε αυτό είμαστε, δεν κάνουμε καμία διαπραγμάτευση. Και ένα μάρκο να οφείλουν πρέπει να το πληρώσουν, ως εγγύηση ότι δεν θα κάνουν στο μέλλον παρόμοια εγκλήματα. The other main party is New Democracy of the center right. It supports austerity and says that if Syriza wins and then rejects painful reforms, Greece could be pushed out of the Eurozone altogether. But New Democracy has been in and out of power for 30 years. Its opponents say it's part of the establishment that has ruined Greece. The vote is some days away, but it feels like all of Europe is waiting to see which way the Greek people decide to go. On my return to Greece, I've met lots of people who are frightened. I've certainly met people who are very angry, but I've also met people who are very determined and they want to get through this crisis. Now, 
I want to go to another country, one whose history is entwined with this one, and one which has the power to define Greece's future once more. The German capital is full of buildings that show the cultural debt to ancient Greece, the admiration, the love of classical culture. And when you look around me, you can see why they call Berlin Athens on the River Spree. I've come to Berlin to ask the same question that I did in Athens. Who is to blame for this crisis that is tearing Greece apart? In Greece, many blame the Germans. They say the austerity measures are counterproductive. They're pushing so many Greeks into poverty that there's no chance of an economic recovery. So is the German medicine killing the Greek patient? The question is, what would have been the alternative? I mean, it's true that the focus is very much on fiscal austerity, on cutting down state expenditure, but by Keeping on spending money it doesn't help Greece, you know? I mean, so the question is not, are we willing to give Greece more money? The question is, is Greece capable of introducing the structural reforms it needs to make its economy more competitive and use the money it has received and will receive from the EU to jumpstart its economy? And so it's not only about fiscal austerity, it's about conditions for the bailout money Greece has to fulfill and is very, has been very reluctant so far to introduce. Germany feels it can give Greece economic lessons because its own model works. The German government says that this country has adapted successfully to a globalised economy, that Germans accepted low wages, for example, for many years to make this country more competitive. They accepted the discipline, if you like, of fiscal restraint and now they're reaping the benefits. So Germany would like to help the struggling parts of Europe and perhaps especially Greece. It would like to pass on the lessons learnt here and, so uh, that Greece can recover. Difficult, difficult things. Hans Joachim Fuchtel, a member of Angela Merkel's government, has been given a special job to revive Greek-German friendship to provide expertise on economic projects. The Germans don't want Greece to collapse because that would undermine the European dream, which they also cherish. Mr. Fuchtel, your job would not exist if there weren't serious problems between Greece and Germany. So how much anti-German sentiment do you run up against when you're in Greece? I must say that everywhere I go, the readiness to a very constructive dialogue. At the beginning of my work, there were some media who had me SA uniforms here built up and me as a statehalter of Frau Merkel. But this situation is overwhelmed. We have from the 325 now after the reform existing cities in Greenland, the Greeks are at the door knocking. Und wir dann eine Antwort geben. Das ist die Grundlage dieser Zusammenarbeit auf absoluter Augenhöhe. Hans Joachim Fuchtel is putting the case for the German government that it will do whatever is necessary to help Greece, provided Greece carries out the policies decided by the European Union. Probably somebody will go down. I mean, Jan van Ecken is also a member of the German parliament, prominent in the opposition left party. He says the kinds of reforms the German government have imposed on Greece have only made things worse. First of all, it was right to support Greece, also with a lot of money, but then they should have put some other obligations on the Greek government. Now it was about reducing wages, reducing uh, retirement, uh, fees, whatever, so take the money out of the people. I would have said, okay, yeah, increase the taxes for, for the millionaires and billionaires, reduce the, the, the arms um, 
expenditures. So it was right to put some obligations on the, on the Greek government, but I would have put completely different <laughs> obligations because right now with this austerity policy, I mean, you, you can't stop the disaster anymore. Now. I know that Angela Merkel is not your favorite politician, but when you see her depicted, certainly in parts of the Greek press, dressed as a Nazi soldier, how does that make you feel? Really bad. I mean, I really dislike her, but she's no Nazi, not at all, and, 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 and that's bad. Um, I understand the feelings behind it, but it's too far. She is just, you know, a hardcore politician trying to gain as much as possible for her country and uh, trying to put a lot of pressure on Greece. All of that is wrong, but she's not a Nazi. When you travel from Greece to Germany, you're leaving one of the most destitute parts of Europe and coming to its economic powerhouse. So many people in Greece are now out of work, but here in Germany, unemployment is at a 20-year low. Many German companies can't even fill all their vacancies. So it's not surprising that lots of Greeks are coming here looking for work, but they're facing all the challenges of building a new life in a very different cultural environment. Evangelos Galenakis and his wife Victoria have just arrived in Berlin. They've left three young children behind in Athens with a grandmother. They hope to bring them here once they've found their feet. They don't speak German, they have no home, no work, and hardly any money. I met them at a support center for Greeks. We don't have a house, nothing, absolutely nothing. We, all together, would take maybe 2,000 euros, no more. 1,800, I think. And that's the money which we came here and look. You understand now how difficult it is? And like us, there are thousands of people. And who do you blame for everything that has gone wrong in Greece? Who's, whose fault is it? Uh, who I blame? I think that all Greek people blame the bad political system. This is, I think. I know you're struggling now to build a new life here. Do you, do you think you will ever live in Greece again? I don't think so. I don't think so. How does that make you feel? It depends. I've met Evangelos and Victoria at their lowest point. I can only hope that in the coming months, once they've started to learn German, that they can find work and that they can bring their children here. At least of Anglos's family won't be isolated in Germany. There are some 300,000 Greeks here, a strong community, but also a well-integrated, successful one. Many came in the 1960s to look for work, and today there is a new wave of immigration. So and I think the Germans realize, and there's a lot of sympathy with the ordinary Greeks, with the with the 20% of unemployed Greeks that really suffer the consequences of a, of a terrible uh, government policy for years. There just seems to be such an irony that the single currency was meant to bring us together to heal the wounds of the past, but it seems to be having instead the opposite effect and actually exacerbating tensions between European countries. I think there is more European identity, there's more solidarity, there's more preparedness to help each other out. And 
that's one thing, the political side of it, but of course the economic side. Everybody realizes that the euro is an economic project, not only a political one, that has by and large benefited everyone, particularly Germany. So there is, I think, a strong will, both a political, for, for political reasons, but also for economic reasons, to help the euro survive. The danger for Greece is that more and more Germans might start to feel they've been generous enough. They've funded bailouts, they've forgiven debt, and they might start to see Greece as a hopeless case that should be cut loose. The problem, of course, is that most Greeks, and probably most Europeans, see things very differently. They believe that the austerity policies which Germany is forcing on the struggling economies of Europe are counterproductive, and they also believe that Germany should change its economic policies here at home. It should raise wages, it should encourage spending, perhaps even allow inflation. That way, Germans might start to buy goods from the rest of Europe. And this fundamental difference of opinion threatens to tear Europe apart. <laughs> Greece has become a battleground and is more and more polarized. Extremism is on the rise. This wasn't the country I knew in happier years. Some Greeks see echoes of the late 1940s when there was a civil war between right and left. For all the turmoil in the streets, that seems a far-fetched comparison to me. But I have come back at a crucial time. Elections are taking place. I've covered many elections in Greece, but this is the tightest, most unpredictable. And the outcome could determine the future, not only of Greece, but of a united Europe. Opinion polls show that Greeks reject austerity, but they do want to keep the euro. So the question is, how many more painful sacrifices are they willing to make to stay in the currency? <laughs> Emi Christoulas is a member of Syriza, at a party office, she's waiting anxiously for the exit polls. If the Syriza is a government, this is what will have a complete change. It will be the law in the first place. With this idea, nothing will change from my life. We will continue to be in the first place, more dynamic, more together, to make sure we don't have just a dream, but a practice. But her optimism is short-lived, as more results pour in in the next But her optimism is short-lived, as more results pour in, it's clear that the center-right new democracy has won. The new government has its work cut out. Despite more emergency funds from the rest of Europe, it's making further cuts to public spending. But no matter who governs in Athens, Greeks feel more than ever that their destiny is in the hands of Germany and the European Union. And many believe that there's no future for them here in their own country. Kronis has been learning German. He wants to take his wife and his young daughter to Germany. The election result made no difference to his decision. Tomorrow, he has his first set of exams. He must pass if he's to realize his dream. The next morning, I went to meet him as he finished. Well, it's an important exam for you, yes, isn't it? Yes, of course, an important exam because uh, my plan is to go to German uh, for my residency. And that's the first step. I have another step <laughs> in September. It's, it's a really... The second exam, yes. It's a, it's a tough schedule that you're yes, on, isn't yes, it's it? it's very tough. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. very tough. We'll see. We'll see. Are you enjoying learning the language or is it just hard work? It's also and ha hard work and uh, I enjoy it. <laughs> you know, it's difficult because uh, that wasn't my plan to go to German, but... What can I do now? <laughs> what can I do? But most Greeks are staying. They don't have the money or qualifications to leave, or like Emmy, 
they are determined to fight on. When her father killed himself in April, he'd hoped somehow that his actions would be a catalyst for change. So now, after election results that for her were so disappointing, how does she feel about what her father did? Την επόμενη στιγμή σκέφτεσαι ότι πρέπει να είσαι έτοιμος για να κάνεις αυτό που λέει ο ποιητής. Να συντηρήσεις φωλιές νερού μέσα στην πυρκαγιά. Να είσαι έτοιμος και την επόμενη φορά πιο σοφός, πιο όριμος και με μεγαλύτερη όρεξη να ξαναορμήξεις μέσα στον ομορφότερο αγώνα. Τον αγώνα του ανθρώπου για τον άνθρωπο. Τον αγώνα αυτών που πίστεψε και ο πατέρα μου. So you will carry on fighting. Πολύ καλά καταλαβαίνεις, θα μείνω και θα συνεχίσω να μάχω με πιο δυνατά, πιο δυναμικά. Emmy is a tough person, but I wonder how much more Greeks will suffer. I can't see an end in sight. Either the richer countries in Europe will have to give Greece billions more euros in loans and debt forgiveness, or perhaps they will decide enough is enough and force Greece out of the Eurozone. In this journey, I've seen how quickly the Eurozone crisis has exposed old wounds, the memories of Germany's domination of Europe. And I've seen that while most Greeks hold their own politicians responsible for the mess their country's in, they find the supposed route to recovery imposed by others almost impossible to follow. The Greeks had a dream that they could live as well as the people of Northern Europe, and the Euro was the key to that. Today, the dream is shattered, and the Greeks themselves must take much of the blame for that. But so too should leaders elsewhere in Europe, in places like Brussels and in Berlin, because they designed this flawed project. And their attempts to save it have caused so much pain and anger here. Mm -hmm.